Thanks for staying with us. So joining us on the show is Dr. Toyosi Yakin Rahim. He is a certified immuno medical laboratory, laboratory scientist and the president of Association of Medical Laboratory Scientists of Nigeria. Welcome to the show, sir. Thank you very much. <laughs> One of the reasons why we brought you on the show is because of this prevalence of um, wrong diagnosis we have in Nigeria. There is always this um, miscarriage of results and um, the fact that people go to have tests and they keep getting wrong diagnosis. I mean, this even happened to me recently. Uh, I was sharing with the ladies where uh, we, 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 we got a condition that we thought what that was. We, got, we were asked to go do a test to confirm it. The test came out telling us, oh, it's not that condition. And we got excited, changed testimony. Hey, hallelujah, hallelujah. The pain persisted. We went back. Somebody said, do another test. Hmm. Until we did a second test about two weeks or so after. We found out that, oh, it was the initial diagnosis. Then we now had, so this is a Nigerian story in our health sector. And I like you because I know this is your area. Is it that we don't have the right equipment? Is it that our doctors are tired because of the numbers they're getting? Is it that we don't even understand mm. the diagnosis at all? What, what causes this wrong diagnosis that has become prevalent in our society? Okay. Um, thank you very much, uh, Murai. Uh, let me start by saying that uh, currently, I'm not the national president of our association, okay. the Association of Medical Lab Scientists of Nigeria. The current president is based in Jos, is oh. Professor James Diamond. Okay. Oh. But I'm a past president of the association. Oh, wow. okay. So, uh, right. Well, to go right to your question, um, so many factors uh, are responsible for misdiagnosis, especially misdiagnosis in medical laboratories. Uh, the first of such factors uh, is that people need to know the laboratory they are going into. The laboratory they want to do this test, is it a laboratory that is recognized by law? Is it a, a laboratory that is manned by the appropriate professionals? Is it a laboratory that has gone through quality management system? Is it a laboratory that fulfills all the requirements before setting up the laboratory? Okay. These are some of the public, uh, uh, public uh, uh, views that must be established before going into a laboratory. Sometimes people tell people to go to a particular laboratory. You have your own right to say, can I go to a laboratory that I'm very sure of? Yeah. Then you so decide. <laughs> Uh, why do I say that? It is because in Nigeria, and not only in Nigeria, globally, quacks are so many. Mm -hmm. And uh, if one was not careful, one will fall into the hands of such quacks. Uh, it's one of the reasons why we as an association, we are clamoring for um, the need for our members to differentiate themselves from those who engage in professional malpractices mm -hmm. or those that are quacks. Because as a professional, as a male lab scientist that is certified, that is registered, that is known and recognized by law, we know what and what should be done. Yes, sir. Uh, How would you identify a good lab as a regular Nigerian? Here I am. I just need to get my lab test done. Now you're mm -hmm. asking me to know all these things you have mentioned. I just want to be able to go into a lab and what are the things I need to check to make sure that, okay, this is one I can trust? Because unlike hospitals where you can have federal government hospital and you know, you know, the names, with labs, you don't have that. Mm. Before so you answer that question, okay. let me go on a quick break. I'll be right back. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. All right, so you're going to answer her question concerning yeah. what to look out for. Yeah. The... There are indicators for how to, or how to identify a very good laboratory. For instance, <coughs> when an individual enters a lab, there must be a conspicuous display of license to practice in that facility of the proprietor and some of the workers in that, of the male lab scientists in that institution. That is one factor. Then there is a, 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 a kind of uh, signage 
that will be given to such a registered or accredited laboratory. Usually, the uh, Medical Lab Science Council of Nigeria uh, provides this uh, signage. And besides, if you go into the various uh, websites of the Medical Laboratory Science Council of Nigeria, a list of registered and accredited laboratories are displayed there. So with public enlightenment and engagement like this, one will be able to uh, know which Identify. laboratory is actually mm. ideal or right. which one is actually not ideal. Okay. These are some of the signs. Yeah, so um, I, for me, I think there are just two sides of it. There's the part of uh, unqualified laboratories who are yeah, not properly yeah. certified. There's also another part of the proper certified laboratories that still have an issue with diag misdiagnosis. How do we ensure, or what are some of the things that are put in place to ensure that those ones who are qualified do not make this sort of mistakes? Mm. Because the truth is, the regular Nigerian cannot even access good health care. Now, the small money you have managed to do, a, you know, a lab test, somebody will not tell you, get a second opinion to be sure. Why do I have to pay two times for one thing? Yeah. That is one of the reasons why we are organizing our regular professional development training. For instance, in Lagos State, the Association of Medical Laboratory Scientists of Nigeria, Lagos State branch, started this one week long, uh, a week long uh, uh, continuous professional training uh, activities on Sunday, and the opening ceremony is today. Okay. These are some of the things that we discuss as professionals. Because, like I said earlier on, there are so many factors that could lead to that. Apart from quackery, apart from professional malpractices, apart from uh, unregistered facilities, one of such reasons that could also account for it is proliferation of substandard reagents and chemicals that are circulating in the market. Mm. Mm. Most Nigerian borders, when it was closed, everybody was uh, shouting that why should Nigeria close the border? It's not only closing because of rice. There are so many medical. unauthorized importation of chemical, um, uh, medical laboratory reagent equipment and uh, devices that find their way into the market. And that is why we as professionals, we have regularly advocated for certification of all of these chemicals and reagents that are used in Nigeria. And that is why we advocated uh, uh, in 2003 for the uh, provision that gives the power to Medical Lab Science Council of Nigeria to certify in vitro <coughs> diagnostic reagents and chemicals before they are used in medical laboratories. So any, we've always advocated or uh, uh, engaged with our uh, colleagues that any reagent that is not certified, that is not registered, that is not allowed by Med Lab Science Council of Nigeria, as provided for in their infantry diagnostic laboratory data, should not be patronized. Mm. But not people that are not Med Lab scientists that are not registered member of our association will not be complying with mm. this type of uh, situation. Yes. That is one very critical factor. Then the time of sampling of uh, 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 the, 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 when an individual presents in the hospital yes. and, or in the laboratory for uh, a testing, uh, it's very important for questions to be asked. Mm -hmm. Is it appropriate to take sample at that time when the person visits the laboratory? Because the time of sampling is also a factor. Yeah. Wow. For instance, if somebody, I'm just giving an example, mm. if somebody is to do HIV testing, for instance, and at the time the test was done, the technique that was used, if the person is looking for antibody, the antibody level is not up to the to detectable level. Because there is something we call limit of detection, LOD. If the limit of detection is so low, such that the reagent and chemicals and equipment that was used at that particular time cannot detect it, it will be declared as negative. Mm. And that is what we call window period. So wow. if a week or two weeks later, yeah. such a test is repeated, you come so positive. positive. All right, so, sir, so, I mean, I don't want us to go too much into the granular details because what Nigerians are asking for is how to ensure that if I enter a diagnostic center, I get everything I need. So, I mean, yesterday we were talking about how we can use Nigerians abroad, partner. You do have a private partnership. Does your organization encourage partners with Nigerians abroad where they come in and create diagnostic centers across the country? Because one of the issues we've had is that so here, you can do HIV here, and then tomorrow you can do this scan there. Then, oh, is MRI you want to go there? Oh, is dialysis mm. you go there? They are scattered all over. Like, you are flat. So a sick person is flying from A to Mushi to Lagos to AU just for a testing. Mm. Yeah. So 
What is your organization doing? Where even though we don't have the money, can we partner with Nigerians or organizations abroad to get funding where you have one center that does everything? everything. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, it's, it's a very critical area that we need to look into, and that is the center of our reasoning that our association, as Association of Medical Lab Scientists of Nigeria, is seriously advocating on, mm -hmm. because there is a national laboratory policy. A national laboratory policy that was recently approved. It was, it was in existence before, but it's reviewed to run between 2021 and 2026. One of the key areas that we insisted on is laboratory networking and referrals. You don't have to send patients to say, go to this lab, and when you get there, the person says, oh, I can only run this. You go to another one. It's even adding to the stress of the, uh, yeah, the clients. Patient, yeah. So we have a kind of strategy that we are promoting under laboratory referrals and networking. Without giving the trouble to the patient, everything could be done in a particular uh, center. Even if that center does not have what is uh, the, the re necessary requirement to do that, under that policy, there is provision for laboratory referrals and networking. And the satisfaction that is expected of a patient or a client will still be given to that person. Besides that, we also encourage one-stop uh, one shop. One-stop shop is such that everything that a client needs can okay. be provided in that center. And that is through collaboration and networking. We, uh, our members are beginning to move from sole proprietorship into a, a kind of uh, Collaboration. collaborations mm. to establish okay. mega practice that will consist of so many other areas because that is the way to go. We yeah. cannot continue to move patient, a client from one point yeah, to the exactly. other, and uh, that will be added, especially in the terrible road yeah. network that we now have in the country. But, but is it a Nigerian thing to go to the hospital, and then the hospital refers you to labs? Other countries, you go to the hospital, and everything is done in the hospital. But now in Nigeria, you go to a hospital, and the hospital will tell you the, like five different labs to go to. And then, is it more about the labs wanting to make it a business for themselves. Maybe is it they are looking at it like the hospital takes out of the funds that could be coming to them? Or because I don't see why labs cannot be attached to hospitals. People are going to the hospitals anyway. Take the sample, do it in the hospitals. Why do I have to go to the hospital and then move? Is that to right? Labs. Well, everywhere globally, we have standalone laboratories and we have hospital based laboratories even outside the country. So it does not matter whether it is a standalone uh, facility or a laboratory that is within the hospital. The most important thing is that people should be able to get the quality that is expected from that. Uh, the reason I mentioned that is with the hospital, if you're attached to a hospital in Nigeria, you can say this is a an accredited lab. Yeah. But when you have different labs, different people can stand alone labs, you go into a tiny little corner, you say a lab, you say, who now is able to accredit, make sure that this is accredited? Because as you say, we enter those labs, we see those pieces of papers laminated. We really don't know what the government license looks like. Mm. We need to even know as Nigerians, what does it even look like? So when we see, we know that that's what we're citing. Well, like I was saying, having everything in a hospital does not guarantee the quality that is expected. There are some laboratories, even right inside the hospital, that are of substandard. Mm. And there are a number that are standing alone that are of high quality. So whether they are standing alone or they are inside the hospital, the most important attention that should be paid is the quality that is there. And that is why there is a standard that our association, the Association of Medical Laboratory Scientists of Nigeria, is promoting. That is the use of ISO 15189 standard. Where, whether you are standing alone, whether you are inside the hospital, as long as you are implementing that standard, the, stand, the quality that is expected if to come out of that will be the same, provided that standard is implemented okay. because it is uniform. Even outside Nigeria, that standard is also used. It's a global standard okay. for medical right. laboratories. A quick okay. question, sir. So what's like the minimum qualification of this lab assistant? Because sometimes I worry lab if... Check. They are, um, if they are doctors, if they are the level of nurses, what's the minimum for you to be able to work in the lab? Okay, uh, 
You have said again, lab attendant. Lab attendant cannot, <laughs> cannot even work in the lab. Mm. The lab Medical. attendant, by our own concept, is to uh, maybe assist Clean up, okay. cleaning up the lab, know. washing the Medical. necessary areas and all that. He has no business only a test. Okay. Uh, but like you have said, what is the minimum qualification? qualification? For you to become a medical laboratory scientist that will be registered yeah. and licensed, you must have gone through the universities, That's half the your degrees, bachelor's of medical lab science, That's and true. then they register. You will do professional exams and mm. be certified that you have passed both the academic and professional exams. Mm -hmm. Then a license will be issued to you to practice. So if that person uh, uh, passes through those uh, stages and is, uh, possesses those qualifications, mm. that person is... So the person uh, is almost on the same level with the medical doctor? Well, of course, the same uh, level because the, 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 the regulatory authority for med medical laboratory scientists is the Medical Lab Science Council right. of Nigeria. They are the ones that register and issue the license. <laughs> Finally, for doctors, it's MDCA. We have to wrap up soon, but if we find anybody who has had a wrong diagnosis or, is, or has their mm. own complaint, is there a sanction for these centers? And who did they report to? How did they reach you to report these centers to you? Yes, there is... Um, there, there is if, <laughs> Anybody is established to have performed a misdiagnosis, and that misdiagnosis is traced to either professional negligence or any other uh, malpractices. Then the first approach is to report the person to the Medical Lab Science Council of Nigeria. By law, the council has the power of, I mean, in the act that sets up the council, uh, the, the MLSCN Act. 2003, which is called LFN M25, LFN Law of the Federation of Nigeria in 2004, provided for disciplinary action or for disciplinary committee. And the disciplinary committee has the power of a high court judge. So it is, it is there in the law. Anybody that is detected, the council, the MLSCN uh, uh, address is on the website. You can just type it and send it to the MLSCN, right. and action will be taken. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you for joining us this morning. I appreciate it. Thank you okay, very much. Okay, it's Tuesday. That's all we can take on the show. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now. Thank you very much. Thank you.